Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with a new Mr. Ballin video. This one is titled, He Recorded Horror After Horror in the Small Room. And the title of this may change. We've all seen it like it happens. I can't help it. I will try to change it in the description if it does. If not, I forgot. <laughs> all right. It's a Mr. Ballin video. I'm excited to get into today's story. If you guys are excited as I am, go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, cut up with something special. Let's get horrified. Yeah. Uh, and before we get into today's story, I just want everybody to know the B5 Nation Discord is up. It's going, it is there. There is, you can go there for free, and there is also. Uh, a tier membership one there too for supporters it uh right now i have it set up hold on right now i have it set up there's a section for bill 5000 reacts which is the videos that i do here i also post there just in case you're someone who doesn't want to come to youtube to watch me you can watch on the discord uh there is a section for request if for some reason I'm not getting a request because I've noticed that a lot of people has been having a hard time getting the request to me on YouTube and in the comments and stuff. So if you can't, there's the Discord. And yes, I'm pointing right there because it's pulled up on my laptop right over there. Uh, there's a place for discussions because, you know, sometimes I, I don't do lives because I have really shit internet. I have Armstrong cable internet. I used to have AT&T and they really, really pissed me off. Long story. Uh... So I don't do lives because it just wouldn't happen, to be honest with you. I would like to because I love talking to you guys. I, I, it's one of my favorite things. And, you know, sometimes during the premiere, I, I always premiere them. That way I can get over to the live chat and talk to you guys. And sometimes the conversation's not over. The premiere's over and it doesn't let me write no more because it says my premiere is over. Now we have a section just for discussions on the Discord. And if you notice down below discussions there's a place that says pictures the reason why i put that in there is because a lot of you have been sending me pictures of beautiful places where you live and i fucking love it keep it up keep doing it do it on my discord though that way i have it it's there and everyone can see the beautiful scenery that we all get to see i i live in ohio I don't have a whole lot of beautiful scenery and the beautiful scenery that is around here. I've seen a billion times. You know what I mean? So I, I, and you guys, if you guys watch the channel at all, you guys know how much I love like beautiful nature pictures and everything else and scenery. And so if you guys want to send pictures, just whatever, it doesn't even have to be pictures of you just, if you guys want some pictures, whatever there's, it's there, you can do it. And then there's going to be a place that's called B5 Videos. Now, B5 Videos is a part of the supporter thing. It's $3.99, and in that is going to be videos that I do not do on YouTube. Because some of you want me to react to like some shorter videos and stuff like that. And, and I don't mean like, you know, 12, 13, 14 minute long videos. I mean like shorts, actual shorts. And the way shorts are done like they have to be your original content like i could do it but only thing you would see is like this section like going up you know what i mean because i wouldn't be able to put mr bond's actual stuff in there because you know it, they're his shorts but it's his video it's his original contact content I know I'm reacting to it, but it, it is his content. I'm just reacting to it. I'm just the pretty face down in the corner. Uh, but there are things that I just can't do here. Monetization reasons and so on and so forth that I can do on Discord because it will be behind, you know, a, a paywall. So I don't have to worry about a lot of bullshit that goes along with it. You know what I mean? You do not have to join. By any means, I don't care less. I will still talk to you just the same. Does not matter to me. I just did it. Just because, you know, I want to expand a little bit. And that's all. So, 
If you want, you don't, you do not have to by any means, but if you would like, you can go over to the discord. It's the link is in my YouTube page. Go to like my home screen on YouTube and it says other links. Discord should be the very first one. I've tried to link it in the description, but every time I do, it fucks up the link. I don't know why. If you guys know why, let me know in the script description below. I don't know. And let me know in the comments below. I don't know why I said description. It's one of those days, people. So, yeah. I think I've covered it about as good as I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, w I want a nice place for the B5 Nation to just be one hell of a community. I like, I love you guys. You guys are amazing. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. So I want you all to have a nice little home to where we can go. We can all chat and talk with each other and just have a, a good time and not worry about all kinds of bullshit that goes along with it. You know what I mean? So if you want, you don't have to check it out now. Let's go ahead and get in day story. So today we have a very special and very unique episode for you guys. So if Fuck you don't yeah. remember, last year on October 20th, 2023, I did my first ever live show to a real audience, 1,300 people at the Paramount Theater yeah. in Austin, Texas. I was absolutely terrified before I went on stage, but my goodness, it was like one of the best experiences of my life. And if you were there, thank you for being there. You're amazing. It was such an amazing time. I'm so glad I got to meet so many of you. But critically, we were actually filming a documentary right around this time about me becoming Mr. Ballin. And it was about basically my journey from, you know, the TikTok days to YouTube and podcasting. And then we kind of capped off the documentary by including footage from this live show. And so Damn. right now, we're gonna premiere that documentary that we're so proud of. Only a handful of people have seen this, and so this is a big deal. This is a really cool thing. We hope you enjoy it. But also, stick around till the end of this documentary, because we have quite possibly the biggest announcement ever out of the strange, dark, and mysterious universe. It's the biggest one I yet. Bet I, know. I think you're gonna be really excited about it. And hint, hint, it's alluded to throughout the documentary what the announcement is going to be. But yeah, before we get into this amazing documentary and big announcement at the end, if you're a fan of The Strange, Dark, and Mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, on the hottest day of the year, offer to give the like button a ride to work. Okay. And when they get in your car, blast the heat on full and refuse to stop. Even though it hurts you, it hurts them too. <laughs> also, please subscribe to our channel Shit. and turn on all notifications so oh, you don't God. miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into the world premiere of the documentary, Becoming Mr. Ballin. Oh, Enjoy. so we're... This is the documentary? Fuck yeah, bro. I wasn't even thinking that we was going to... Here we go. Hi, my name is John Allen. I am better known as Mr. Ballin online, and I would say that I am a professional storyteller. Your ability to storytell is impeccable. Some of the stories that you pick are just like, it, it, it screws with my mind a little bit. All their tents have been slashed open, but from the inside, and inside the tents was all their gear. You are the channel that I binge, told my mom about, she binges it. Told my brother about, he binges it. I react to you, bro. I, I, I love your shit, so uh, I get it. I'm in comfort zone. Yeah, it's literally being in a storytelling mode. This is gonna be wicked. Oh fuck, I got the chills, bro. Like, that's crazy. I love it. Well, uh, future you, I hope the show went incredibly well. I hope that you got to enjoy being on stage and got to really just be in the moment. Um, <sighs> 
I, I'm very nervous, but I'm, I'm very excited. So Hell yeah, bud. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hey, you deserve all the good shit happening to you, man. Plain and simple. I grew up in a town called Quincy, Massachusetts. It's just south of Boston, Massachusetts. My mother and my father were both and are still just brilliant, brilliant people. My father is, uh, you know, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. He ran a, an investigative journalism team at the Boston Globe called Spotlight. Really? My immediate family, the way we communicated was like, we'd send these emails to each other that were like totally unnecessarily long about like really kind of meaningless things. Everybody over communicated. Everyone had to write in beautiful prose and like tell whole full length stories about the smallest of things. And so I was literally raised effectively by storytellers. I always viewed myself as being kind of like the black sheep of my family because my two sisters, my older and younger sister, like totally excelled in school and my older sister became a Pulitzer Prize winner twice actually and my, my younger sister is a PhD scientist working out of a Harvard lab. I was like the guy that kind of bombed. Uh, my, one's got a PhD, the other one's got a Pulitzer Prize. I'm a YouTuber. I Okay, I, I see why you thought you was the black sheep, bro. Man, if you only knew where you would be at, though, at that age, man. High school, not because I was dumb, I just didn't really try. Effectively I flunked like... out my first semester in college because I didn't go to class. But fast forward a bit, uh, after I did wind up graduating college, I got my act together. I joined the Navy and I, I become a Navy SEAL. And one of the things people don't know about really the military, unless you're in the military, is there is lots and lots of public speaking that goes on all the time. I learned that my strength was was definitely like, I can tell stories exceptionally well, and I can remember a lot of details if I have a story in my mind. There wasn't ever a, a day where I thought to myself, you know, here's the big idea. Generally speaking, social media and, you know, creating content allows people kind of relative nobodies to post things on the internet and if the world likes it it can elevate that person and create you know a brand or you know a new youtube channel i really missed the mark for a number of years trying to create content that people would like i mimicked other people's content style on tiktok which was so cringy i was like doing dance videos and like comedy sketches nobody was interested but I knew the one thing that I've always been just fundamentally interested in is strange, dark, and mysterious content. The day it all changed. I put together this really crappy TikTok video, crappy in the sense that I, you know, I, I formatted it all wrong, like the script didn't really make much sense, but it had the, the meat and potatoes of this really fascinating story about these hikers that go missing uh, in the 1950s the in Russia. Press. When you finish this video, you're going to Google two words. In 1959, nine very experienced Russian hikers set off on a 16-day expedition into the mountains. Seven days in and some bad weather forced them to... And I post the story to TikTok, and I was actually at a water park with my family in, in Pennsylvania. Because we're going to be in the water park, I couldn't have my phone, it would get soaked, so I left it in the room. We went to the park all day, and I came back to my room, and I opened up my phone. The video that I had posted about the missing hikers had like 5 million views. Uh, and to give a, some perspective, I think the most views I ever got on any piece of content ever to that point was like, maybe 10 or 20,000 over like a year long period. I launched into this insane, you know, making content 24 seven to try to replicate the success of that first video. After a few months of doing that and the TikTok account had really grown quickly, I transitioned to YouTube. I remember I pulled my wife aside, Amanda, and I, and I tried to explain to her like, hey, so I have this thing going on TikTok and I'm, I'm gonna like do it on YouTube. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I, I think it's something. But in order for me to do it, I need you to take the kids basically 24 seven and let me only work like 24 seven until this becomes whatever it becomes. And my wife's like, okay, I'll do that for you. So I wanted to bring you into my Hell dojo yeah, she's an angel, where I, uh, I create all of my content. It's called the mustard room. Uh, it's pretty high speed, so don't be intimidated. <laughs> it's my setup, it's nice and neat. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. I kid you not, I was in that back room in Pennsylvania with the space heater and the rodents in the walls, like churning out content for like six months. And I was sleeping in there. I mean, literally it was my life.
She believed in me, and so she let me do it. Um, and it, it really is what allowed the channel to grow. Hell yeah. John was flagged to me by my buddy Giacomo. So Giacomo is a guy that hit me up. He's like, if anyone can work for this guy, it's you. And I knew nothing of digital. I knew nothing of YouTube, nothing of TikTok. I don't even have social media. I didn't understand what I was looking at when I looked at John's content. But me being a veteran, and I've always worked with veterans in entertainment, I was like, I like what he's doing. I can believe in this guy and what his message is. And I could tell that there was something there. So I was like, all right, let me, you know, have you guys tried to sign him? They're like, yeah, we tried to sign him like eight months. He won't, he won't sign with us. He'd barely take a call. He just, he, he, you know, he's a former Navy SEAL, makes content from his phone. What's a manager to this guy? I go, you guys are just approaching it wrong. I reached out to him, I got his email. Subject line, I'm a combat vet, love your material. I work with Mr. Beast. I also have some experience in the traditional space and I love your content, huge fan. Hit me up if you ever have any questions. Not here to sign you, not here to make any money. Just one vet to another. About a week later, he hit me up. He's like, dude, I was running through some emails, deleting everything, and I saw your email and I'm down to talk. It was funny because these guys who like rep Mr. Beast couldn't sign this guy. And so for me, I was like, if I'm gonna work with anybody, this is the guy. Not everyone gets to find their unicorn, but I did in, in Nick, and I think Nick found his unicorn in me, uh, and, and that's what it has allowed us to grow, where I, I know what I'm responsible for, and it's, I, it's the thing I know I'm good at, storytelling, and Nick does everything else. You can't just insert yourself in someone's life. You have to just show you know, that you're there for the right reason. My yeah. way was like, all right, I lived in Austin, he was in PA, but I put a reminder on my calendar every Sunday ping John, say what up. And just ask him if he needs any help with anything and just start to like kind of build a relationship organically. I mean, Nick really, I mean, single-handedly has grown from me, the, the one-man band, Mr. Ballin, to a full-blown studio. I've been in like the, the back room of my house in Pennsylvania that had no heat and rodents running in the walls to now have like a literal studio with all the right equipment and soundproofing. Whoa. This is the podcast setup. It's uh, about half of the studio here. Uh, and the most important part of the podcast setup is right here. Boom. Got the headlights, the functioning headlights on the set. Very cool. I bring this guy down here. And boom. This is, this is the, uh, the podcast setup. And if we're doing a live event, you'd see the, uh, the cool headlights. But I always turn them on no matter what. And over here, we have the YouTube setup. As you can see with the green screen here, uh, this actually took so many coats of paint. This is like not a simple thing to create. It needs to be totally uniform. So sick little uh, green screen. And then the Mr. Ballin director's chair. Sit here, fire up my, uh, my laptop, and then I record YouTube episodes right here. And believe it or not, even though I have this whole studio, I still record the YouTube episodes on my phone. And so I literally just put my phone on this little $5 tripod, sit down here and if you're a fan of The Strange, Dark, and Mysterious, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do inside of The Strange, Dark, and Mysterious studio. And so this is it. This is where I, this is where I spend like all my time. That's I do great. my research and writing and scripting over here and obviously YouTube as well, and this is it. That's I really movie. don't read from the script. Uh, it's not because I'm better than that or something. It's more like the way I work, the way I tell stories is I need to like inhabit the story and really like internalize the details of the story. And so I get the script and I study the script and basically memorize not the words on the page, but the structure of the story. And then once it's in my head, like I've got it. I wanted to make it really clear to anybody that was gonna tune in and, and watch a piece of content from me. If you wait to the end of the story, it will be worth it. Every week we're it. putting out multiple stories that are, you know, it's five, 7,000 words, which is, you know, 30 to 45 minutes long that are, you know, fully researched, you know, and written out. There's an enormous amount of work. And this is how many, many YouTubers begin. They just kind of do it all themselves. But it just, it's, it's totally not sustainable.
I have this mantra that I try to preach to my kids, which is like, do things that scare you. Because generally speaking, things that scare you are actually the things you want to do. I'm yeah. so impressed with people that literally take the stage and, and perform in front of a live audience. To me, like stand-up comics are some of the bravest people you'll ever meet. That, that is an otherworldly level of courage to go up there and face potential ridicule and like bombing. Okay. I'll admit that I was still resistant to the idea, even though now I have the material and I have the audience that would listen to it, but I was still just like nervous. I want the the people in the audience to be drawn into the stories I'm telling the same way they are at home when they're watching YouTube or listening to a podcast. And it's a privilege to have the opportunity to stand in front of people that want to be there, the thousand plus people who have chosen to be here, that have flown from out of the United States to be here just to listen to me. Like, yes, that's pressure, but it's also a privilege. He's going to go on tour, ain't he? He's gonna go on tour, ain't he? Because he said there's gonna be like little, you know, tidbits throughout the whole video. And he's talked about like everyone coming to his live and stuff, having to travel. He's gonna go on, man, I'm getting, man, I'm getting the chills, homie. Taking it all in. Mr. Bowen coming to a city near you. Hello, hello, team. Hey, how you doing? Wow. Very strange, dark, and mysterious in here. This is amazing, whoever designed and did this. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I, I don't know what I had in mind, but it was way less cool than this. This is, this is infinitely better than I imagined. Everyone's showing up in the panel. This is my daughter, Mr. Baldwin. She loves you. We're here because of you. We flew all the way from North Carolina. We love your show. You're doing great. And thank you for serving our country. Excited to be here. Can't wait to see you. For years, I've been watching all of your videos. I got my husband to watch all of them as we go to bed. They have become our bedtime routine. So thank you, Mr. Baldwin, for everything that you've done for us. John's fans are like the strongest, most Fuck loyal yeah. community I've ever seen. They are some of the best. And ever. the fact that he gets to bring that to them in person is just fascinating. Rare shot of a hatless, in uniform oh, Mr. Ball. Yes. Very cool. I'm actually feeling pretty calm. Oh yeah. All things considered. Yep, wanted to make sure you had a good feel of like when you're on stage, what they're gonna see, how you're gonna see them. You know, you probably won't see too, too deep in. I probably will see but virtually no one. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Imagine everyone naked. That's the trick. <laughs> He's so primed. He's such a professional. It is. All and of you are naked right he's now. He's been ready for this since he started telling stories. He just now is at a point to really execute it. To look at this and I'm just like so proud for like him, my client, but I'm so proud of him as my brother. You know, and this is such a good moment for him to have in his family. Yeah, like I told him, I don't cry, dude. This is so cool, man. All the hard work that he's done, hard work that we've done together, gets his moment, he, Bro, I'm proud of he deserves it. I wanted Ballin Studios to be the place where the best things. storytellers want to go. We know there is huge appetite amongst our incredible fans for hearing these stories in person, but we want to find every possible way to engage with our fans and get these stories out there. And we really believe that live storytelling events are, are gonna be a big part of our offering. What a privilege, huh? I want them to leave thinking, my God, that guy can tell a story. are going to cover four, maybe five stories. So we can see how it goes, four or five stories. This is called The Experiment, and it's new. These are not just cool stories. These are real stories about real people. 
I knew the one thing that I've always been just fundamentally interested in is strange, dark, and mysterious content. We kind of have a responsibility with this popularity to really, in a big and meaningful way, literally give back to the victims who are actually in the stories we have covered. We decided to start the Mr. Pollen Foundation, uh, which is a uh, charity that honors and supports victims of violent crime, as well as their families. And this charity, it's, it's entirely not for profit. I mean, really, their donations that come in are going right out the door to victims and to their families. Ballin Studios is contributing over a million dollars just this year. It'll continue to go up every year, which offsets all of the operational costs completely and then some, so that when people are donating to this charity, it, it's literally 100% goes out the door to the people that need it. enjoyed that documentary as much as we did creating it. I will tell you that seriously, up until the last second before I walked on stage, I was so nervous, like so nervous. But as I walked out on stage to our theme song and Came this amazing up, audience up, of all you incredible, Gots strange, Gots dark and mysterious it. fans, it was electric. I felt invincible up there and all the nerves went away. And I just had the most incredible time. I can't oh, yeah. thank you enough if you were there and thank you for tuning in all the way to now because now it's time for the big announcement that really is a product of how well that first live event went. Because I enjoyed that so much, and because it was so clear the audience did too, I've decided to do a full-blown tour. Starting ah, on September 26th through October 20th of this year, you can find me in 15 different cities across the United States. And this show is gonna be amazing. It's gonna include never-before-heard yeah. stories on any of our channels or mediums, to go to one and of also ones. some good old-fashioned classics. And there's amazing set design and sound effects, and there's some interactive stuff going on. I mean, it's really an incredible show. We're really building off the success of that first show that was featured in the documentary. And guess what? Tickets for this tour are available right now. Like, literally right now. Fuck All you yeah. have to do is go to tour.ballinstudios.com and for this week only, we have set aside blocks of tickets in each of these different cities for all you truly diehard fans of The Strange, Dark, and Mysterious. And so to access those blocks of tickets, go to tour.ballinstudios.com and use code BALLEN, B-A-L-L-E-N. Pre-sale will only be available until June 28th, so don't miss out. You gotta go over there and secure those tickets ASAP. And in terms of what kind of tickets you can get, they range from general admission to VIP. And if you do the VIP package, you get to meet this guy. All right, pretty good, pretty good. And just for reference, the <laughs> VIP tickets Love for it. that one show we Love did last it. year that was in this documentary, those sold out pretty much right away. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, you really gotta go to tour.ballin studios right now and get those VIP tickets, because they're gonna go. So that's gonna do it. I can't wait to see you on this big tour. I'm Hell seriously yeah. so excited. So go get your tickets and seriously, thank you so much for all the support over the years. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without Grab all Mr. of Ballman, you. Gotta so order thank some you tickets. so much. And until next time, see ya. So today we- All right, I really enjoyed that, man. I didn't know if we'd get to like react to the documentary. I didn't know if it was gonna be coming out here or you know whatever the case may be. Oh, I really love that. Oh, 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 oh. And he also came out with something Wednesday. Um, It's some of his old videos put into a new video. And it has a new live at the end of it. If y'all would like to see me react to that, because I'm sure either we have reacted to some of them or whatever, I don't care to do it again. Like, it, it seems interesting. If you guys would like to for me to react to that, because I imagine we've probably seen at least one video in that. But if you guys would still like me to react to that, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think about it, and I'll definitely react to that. I don't care to react to it at all. 
uh, I love anything Mr. Ballin puts out. He's he's an amazing person. He he's the most genuine person like ever. Like, and I'm so proud and so happy that he has gone and has came as far as he has. It's it's amazing. Love it. All right. Really enjoyed today's video. If y'all enjoyed it as much as me, please go down there, leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. While you're down there going over, slap the subscribe button, become part of the Bill 5000 Nation. We do some crazy stuff here. If you want to know when that crazy stuff happens, ding that bell. It might work for you. It might not. It probably won't. But if it do, if it do, jump in on one of my premieres and let me know if you're going to go to one of those tours. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. And if you're a fan of the Bill 5000, show up to a Mr. Ballin video wearing some Bill 5000 merch. Get me out there, bro. <laughs> no, don't do that. Love you, Mr. Ballin. I'm sorry. You have a very. Yeah. Wrong buttons. I'm all fucked up. He's going to come after me. I got to go. Yeah.